Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Illusion of Gaia. In the last part we got here to the Mountain Temple, what is easily one of the more annoying dungeons in the game, and now we're thankfully gonna finish it. Uh -huh. I will say it's... Thankfully this place is nowhere near as long as the past couple dungeons, but still, it's annoying factor just for the pure amount of enemies makes up for that. Also, I do have to ask, what are these little th mushroom house things that are all over the place? Was there once a civilization here, or...? Hmm. Uh, one thing that I completely forgot about is at this point, actually, I forgot to mention this last part, I think. The Dark Fire upgrade can actually kill pretty much every enemy in here in one shot, if not get them near death. And, uh, if the Dark Fire upgrade is actually really good if you know how to aim it correctly, because if you know the right timing, you can kill, like, five enemies with, with its, uh, residue. Well, I think the upgraded Dark Fire might do the most damage in the game. Does it? Hmm. Not actually sure about that. And killing all the enemies on the screen nets you an HP increase. In fact, you're gonna get a couple of those in this place. I think I lead the place with a total of uh, 34 HP or so. Somewhere around there. And here we got mushroom drops. You might be wondering what those are for. Well, to first off, let's backtrack to the previous screen that I think we were in last part. And you may have actually, if you were exploring, you might have noticed that little thing at the top of the screen right there. Uh, if you come up here, you can see that the path is actually destroyed. If you use the mushroom drops here, however, it somehow repairs this. Don't get how that works, but okay. You got to do that a total of three times to this place. You need new mushroom drops for every single one. It's at this part of the dungeon, actually, where they start throwing ridiculous amounts of enemies with you. I think the next screen we're going to go on has, like, 39 enemies in it. And the thing is with this room in particular is that uh, you can't kill all the enemies in it in one go. I might have not remember, uh, because of how I mentioned, you're going to need to use a total of three mushroom drops throughout the dungeon. Uh, the rest of the two you need to use in this room, and enemies are in certain sections that are blocked off by the destroyed pathways, like the ones on my right right now. Luckily, finding the mushroom jobs is easier than you'd think, because uh, you're pretty much guaranteed on one pathway. I know why I'm backtracking. Apparently I am. Hmm. Uh, which room is this? This is this one, okay. Uh, there's quite a few... Uh, you're gonna encounter quite a few of the enemies in this screen on the upper route. However, uh, you should have gone. If you noticed earlier, there was a bit of a fork. You could have gone north or south there. I recommend going south first because you can find uh, a small amount of enemies down there that you can kill right now. So you can save yourself some backtracking time. Really, I can't really say much more about the enemies, because I've pretty much said everything about them last part. And here's the second mushroom drops, however, there's still some enemies to kill on this screen. Also, you might be wondering, uh, if you notice in the top, I have nine lives, however, you cannot get over nine. So you're probably wondering, what happens if you get a uh, hundred uh, dark force points when you, or really, they're, they're coins, really, that's what they are, they give you extra lives. Uh, what happens if you get 100 while you have 9 lives in stock? Nothing. Uh, it stops at 99. So I guess if you ever die once, you'll have an instant instantaneous uh, refill there. Also, let the amount of HP we have... HP we have, rather. I think I may have misspoke there for a second. Uh... 
tell you how close we are to the end of the game. Uh, but it, there's only a total of two dungeons left that are big, at least. In some ways, this is actually a breather, because, uh... Oh god, the next one's really hard. Also, I love how the block can block pretty much anything, because it blocks fire! It's kind of hard to do that. Unless you're using a magic fire ring. That a squirrel somehow has. Uh, one of the kinks about this game is that I do hate house enemies that are off-screen or considered not there, so your Dark Friar can't hit them. Which is pretty annoying. Not in many cases, but it's annoying enough at certain points where you can mention it. And this is the room that has 39 enemies! Uh, this is easily the largest room in the game, so if you get lost here, don't get too worried. Hell, I backtrack out of this room off-screen because it's so big. Uh, there's 39 enemies, of course. There's a mushroom drop in here which you need to progress. And there's also a dark space that has a new power for freedom in here, so make sure you find all of those. Really? There's not much I can say about killing the same enemies over and over again. Hmm. See, that's why I like normal turn-based RPGs or Pokemon, because at least in those games, I can edit out repeat fights. <laughs> Action RPGs are a bit of a different story with me. Oh boy, I can't wait if I ever do Last Story. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, actually, I really like Last Story. <laughs> it's actually my favorite Wii game. And, you know what the worst defender about this dungeon is? I mentioned how I like the way this dungeon looks last part, I believe. How at the same time, everything looks the same. It's... Ugh. I don't know how that would work, by the way. And here's the mushroom drop. <laughs> However, I still have to find not only the dark space, but the enemies. That I haven't killed yet. And keep in mind, I edited out about five minutes of this part. <laughs> Was that necessary? Yeah, pretty much. Unless I have to, I don't like my parts generally going off over 22 minutes. RPGs that are turn-based, I have a, I have uh, exceptions to that. Which makes me wonder, how will I ever do stuff like Act Razor or Soul Blazer if I ever get to that? Well, that was useless. Although, one thing I haven't mentioned at this point, surprisingly, is that you can tell if you found an exit to another screen if the path has some purple mushrooms next to it. I didn't notice that in my first playthrough, so I'm glad I didn't miss. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I gailed that guy with no chance. So yeah, as you can see, now I have 9 extra lives and 99 Dark Force points. So pretty much, I'm pretty good if I ever die. <laughs> Mind you, there's not many chances of me dying throughout the rest of the game. Huh. Well, maybe in the final dungeon. And here's a new power for freedom. This is the aura barrier. Uh, I was actually wrong last part when I mentioned uh, I don't. I don't think I. I don't use it for the rest of the part. In fact, I don't think I ever really have to use it. It's essentially the equivalent to the dark spin for freedom, except it doesn't speed him up. Uh, it pretty much just creates a barrier around him that protects you. Not terribly useful. I don't think you ever have to use it, as far as I can remember. There might be one occasion. And if you couldn't tell, I cut back to the previous screen where I just used the mushroom drops. 
Uh, thankfully, the next screens are pretty linear with getting uh, towards the final goal of the dungeon. Yeah, more defense, which is always good. In fact, when I say linear, I mean that the next screen, there's only one path you can take. Everything else is a dead end. Well, that's generally how dungeons work, but you get what I mean. And there's nothing on this screen aside from the treasure chest which has our gold, the teapot. There we go. And with that, I'm actually going to backtrack out of this place completely off screen and actually get back to the mansion in Euro. And also send this red gem to jewel, a uh, red jewel to gem rather, because of the next rewards until we get all 50 of them, so I don't really need to care about doing that. That took about three minutes, by the way. So, let's use the teapot in front of these guys. I never really talked to them, so we don't know the reason to do this, but we might as well anyway. Oh dear. It's the Moon Tribe! And the owners of the bodies, uh, you might remember back in the shrine we were in last part here in Euro, there were skeletons? Yeah, those were Neil's parents. Needless to say, with finding out his parents were not who they thought they were, and his actual ones are dead, He's rather distraught. So, we're just gonna leave him alone for a while. Sorry, buddy. But hey, at least you can become a Batman now. You're an orphan. You own a multi-million dollar industry. Oh my god, you are Batman. <gasps> we need a spin-off. <laughs> so, he's next in excellent to inherit the company, so he's actually going to stay behind. Sorry, Neil. He, because uh, his company's actually one that started the labor trade that we've been seeing throughout the game. And he's actually going to make sure to stop that, so he's going to stay behind, be the president, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't really care to read the dialogue in this game anymore. However, someone's come asking about Kara, and it's someone we'll recognize. It's the Piggy! I haven't seen him since, like, what, part two or three? Apparently, Lily happened, to pound, happened upon him over Watermia. How he got to Watermia, I have no idea. Because that was like two continents ago. But he sent, but Lily sent him via Rolex. Delivery service. So now we have a pig along for the journey. Yay! Anyway, talking to Kara will send you to the next area of Angkor Wat, which is where the laborers that have been in, this trade la in the slave labor trade uh, are taken from. And it's a good distance away, actually. <laughs> Welcome to the Natives Village, everyone. And my god, this place is hot! Actually, I wonder how much uh, strain this put on the Super Nintendo's processing power. I know the Super Nintendo had the worst processor between it and the Genesis. Hmm. Anyway, you're gonna want to come in this house because, well, first off, people are stoned. And, uh, you can find a red jewel in there. It really is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 8, huh? Anyway, talking to Kara progresses the plot. Uh, there's a dark space gateway in the top right if you want to use it. I don't need to. Although, we're looking at it, I just realized I'm missing one health point. Huh. Oh, well, I have 35. That's more than enough. And then we just fall into a deep sleep. I really just don't care about the plot of this game anymore. Hey, the natives! Maybe they're friendly people. Although it's creepy how they're walking in on us sleeping. Okay, maybe not. Oh, this looks pleasant. They're very hungry, apparently. Then again, it looks like they haven't eaten in a while. 
Oh, that's right, Frigia. There was a server boy in there. I forgot about that. And they're gonna eat us for dinner. Well, at least we're serving the populace. What's up, Hamlet? Oh god, no! Not the piggy! So yeah, well, we have some bacon at least. So, Hamlet just sacrificed himself to save us. And Eric, that is in poor taste. The best character in the game just died. Poor, poor taste, poor form. What the? I, what in the? I still can't tell if this is weir weirder or less, if more or less weirder than the scene in Battle Network 4 when, uh, <laughs> that guy, the curry guy's go wife's ghost came down from the heavens. That was still pretty weird. <laughs> so, yeah, this is our mother, and she's telling us to go find the mystic statues. Why the ghost of our mother was in a pig, I have no idea. There's actually some pretty, uh, good dialogue you can read here with these guys. Though, if you want to progress in the game, the one you want to talk to is the one here on the right, on the top. And he'll draw and he'll draw something on our map to direct us to the next dungeon of Angkor Wat. But with that, I'm going to need to end the things off here. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And next time on Let's Play Illusion of Gaia, we'll be heading onto this next dungeon of Angkor Wat and doing some progress in it. I'm not really looking forward to this place. And we're sending the, the, the jewel to Jim, because why not? See you guys then.